Good evening, everybody. It's February the 16th, 2021, and I bring this uh, regular meeting of council of order. Uh, welcome to everybody out there. Unfortunately, we, we do apologize that we're not live uh, streaming on um, Facebook tonight, so we do apologize for that. Result of the agenda for the February 16th, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes for of the February 2nd, 2021 regular council meeting and February 3rd, 2021 special council meeting, the February 9th, 2021 committee of the whole meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Delorier. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, reception of delegations and hearings, 4.1, we have with us our CFO, CFO and of the auditors in regards to the Swan River Handy Transit Van 2020 draft financial statements. So gentlemen, I will let you uh, take it from here. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Swan River Handy Transit draft financial statements for the year end of December 31, 2020. We'll leave the audit report for the auditor to give later a statement of financial position. Um, of course, uh, we all know, we're very well aware that we went through a pandemic year of COVID and that significantly affected the uh, handy transit operation. The number of trips uh, was reduced considerably. So uh, you, as you can see here, the province of Manitoba grants receivable is uh, payable this year and that's because uh, the, they give an advance of half of the previous year's funding but with the expenses being down significantly because of COVID uh, and they cover 37.5% of operating expenses uh, that is actually less than what they advanced so uh, $1,579 will need to be paid back. Not too many other significant changes on that schedule. So total of financial assets is 233000 up from the previous year, 208. Total li li liabilities is uh, 2800 pretty close to the previous year. Net financial assets is the financial assets minus liabilities and then the non-financial assets for tangible capital assets. So the total surplus is 357,000 of which 95,000 is operating, 127,000 is the capital fund and 135,000 in the reserve fund. The next uh, page shows the statement of changes in the financial assets and accumulated surplus. So the net financial assets, we start with the annual surplus or deficit and add, uh, take out the non-financial uh, asset assets activity and that gives the change in the net financial assets plus the beginning balances, the balance at the end of the year. And then the bottom part is the accumulated surplus. So the annual surplus plus the beginning gives the ending balance. The next page is a statement of operations. So I already mentioned the annual operating grant. We're in 2019, it was just under 23,000 for 2020. It's only 9,900 because it's 37.5% of operating expenses and the operating expenses were down considerably. Uh, something new this year is uh, money from Swan Valley West. They gave $3,400. Okay. 
with the reduced uh, number of trips, the user fees are down from 14,000 to 6,000. And you'll see decreased expenses as well, dispatchers and drivers down from 42,000 to 12,000. Vehicle costs as well down considerably because the, uh, the small handy van was used much more for by law enforcement and animal control than it was for handy van. So most of its costs uh, were allocated to uh, by law enforcement and animal control. And uh, the last line there is amortization. The, recovery from the town that's the portion of the small handy van that was it's uh, amortization that was charged to by law enforcement and animal control so the annual surplus in the operating fund 24,000 in the capital fund uh, minus 11,000 in the reserve fund 1100 for a total of 14,000 statement of cash flows shows where the cash kind of comes from and where it goes to. So it obviously comes from surplus, uh, taking out the accrual changes. So cash from operating activities, 39,000 in the operating fund and 1,600 in the reserve fund for a total of 41,000. And since the handy transit doesn't have its own bank account and it just owes the, or the town of Swan ever owes the handy van and so many cash inflows and outflows go through the town's bank account so the handy van's own cash is only the small float that it has to make change The notes to financial statements, the purpose of the organization, it's a non-profit organization. The financial statements are prepared in accordance with Canadian public, public sector accounting standards. It has the three funds that we mentioned. Tangible capital assets are amortized over their estimated useful lives, the storage building over 25 years, the handy transit vans over seven years, and computer hardware and software over five years, and other equipment over five years. Next page, measurement uncertainty. There's estimates in the financial statements. Particularly accrued pre retirement bonus entitlement but with the employee, long time employee retiring, then that's got uh, eliminated. The province of Manitoba grants receivable that shows that uh, they cover 37.5 of expenses. So the expenses were 26,000, 37.5% of that is 9,900, and they had advanced to 11,000. So Handy Van owes 1,500 back to the province. Significant event, COVID-19 pandemic led to restrictions that resulted in significantly fewer trips in the 2020 fiscal year organization is economically dependent upon the province and the town of Swan River. And then uh, public sector accounting standards require disclosing any related party transactions. And the organization's committee members consist of the members of council for town of Swan River. So as such, the organization is controlled by the town. So the amount due from the town reported on the statement of financial position has no terms or conditions. The grant from the town is calculated as total budgeted operating expenses net of budgeted revenues from other sources. The administration and rent expenses reported on the statement of operations are measured at the approximate value of those services provided by the town. And the amortization expense recovery is calculated as at the approximate portion of amortization of the small handy van used by the town for bio enforcement and animal control. 
And the last page shows the schedule of tangible capital assets. There weren't any additions or disposals during the year, so the only change was the amortization. 5,000 for the building, 5,000 for the handy vans. The computer hardware and software has been fully amortized and 500 for the equipment for the, the total of just under 11,000. That's the end of my presentation unless anyone has any questions. Any questions to Mr. Benita? Okay, and thank you, uh, CFO Benita, and uh, we'll move on to our uh, auditor, Mr. Hardy. Thank you and welcome. All right, thank you. Uh, Terry, could I bother you to um, uh, share the audit report on your screen? And I'll be able to share the, um, the audit findings letter. So uh, at the beginning of the financial statements that uh, Terry just summarized for you and presented, uh, the audit report, as he said, I would cover that later. Um, it's broken down into several different sections. The, the first section is the important one. It's the opinion. So it, the first paragraph identifies that we audited the financial statements of this one over handy transit van, and then it identifies which statements comprise the set of financial statements and that's what Terry just summarized for you and in the second paragraph it indicates that uh, our opinion and in our opinion the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the organization as at its year end which is December 31st 2020 and the results of its operations and cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards as Terry mentioned the framework that these statements are prepared under is the Canadian public sector accounting standards. Uh, second section is the basis for our opinion. So it just indicates that um, uh, what our responsibilities are and uh, the audit evidence that we have to obtain. Uh, and we determined that uh, the audit evidence that we did obtain is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Uh, the next section indicates the responsibilities of management. So that is uh, not just the finance department, but also uh, those of you who are, that are uh, sitting around the table today uh, are those charged with the governance of this organization because you sit on the, on the, uh, the board or the committee of the uh, uh, handy transit van. And so um, your responsibility is to prepare the financial statements in accordance with those public sector accounting standards, which you've uh, uh, delegated that responsibility to uh, Terry to do, and he does an excellent job of that. And that's what was presented to you today. And uh, management is also responsible for assessing your organization's ability to continue as a going concern. That's one of the issues these days. And especially in a, in a COVID year, um, organizations have to take a closer look at their ability to carry on uh, business operations. Uh, there are no concerns here at this time uh, uh, for this audit of your uh, handy van, uh, its ability to, to carry on for future years. And then uh, also those charged with governance are responsible for overseeing the organization's financial reporting processes, which again, you've delegated to management uh, being uh, Terry. Next section is our responsibility. So what is the auditor responsible for and runs through uh, a summary of all the different things that we're responsible for. And the main thing that we're responsible for is to obtain reasonable assurance whether these financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether that's due to fraud or error, uh, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion, which we have done. Uh, the rest kind of summarizes uh, how we do that. But at the very end, at the very bottom, um, we indicate here that we communicate with those charged with governance regarding, among other things, other matters, the plan scope and timing of the audit, which we did in an earlier letter um, to management indicating what our plans were, what, what our plan completion date was, uh, what our materiality level would be. And then we also need to uh, uh, 
um, communicate our significant audit findings, and that's the second letter that I'll go through here right away, including uh, any deficiencies, if we found any, in internal control that we identified during our audit. Uh, we certainly didn't identify any uh, such thing, and we will indicate that in the, uh, the next letter. So then uh, once this uh, set of draft financial statements is approved by council, then uh, right above the spot where it says chartered professional accountants, uh, we sign off on the uh, statement and it's no longer a draft. It is then a, a completed, finalized, uh, audited financial statement. Okay, now Terry, if you'll uh, allow me to share my screen. I should have here, uh, can everybody see uh, my screen that I'm sharing? We can. Okay, so this is a uh, letter that we um, have written to the members of the committee, uh, dated today, because that's the day uh, that the audit report is dated, because that's the day that uh, the financial statements will be uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, accepted and passed as uh, official financial statements. And... Uh, the first section says uh, that we have completed uh, our audit except for completing our discussions with the board of directors, which we're doing right now, and obtaining evidence that the board does approve these financial statements tonight. And once we have that, then we will uh, sign off on the uh, financial statements. So the summary... Firstly, significant risks. We didn't identify any significant risks uh, in the performance of this audit. We did not make any changes to our uh, audit plan that we uh, previously presented in a letter to management. Uh, we did not identify any other significant matters that we need to bring to your attention at this time. We did not incur any, uh, any significant difficulties. In fact, we didn't uh, encounter any difficulties. It's always a pleasure working uh, on an audit that, uh, that Terry has prepared the financial statements and he also uh, greatly helps us out by preparing uh, a lot of the working, most of the working papers, the reconciliations, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to work with Terry on uh, on the audit process. Um, the uh, comments on accounting practices. So Terry had indicated that the uh, accounting policies that you follow in the preparation of these financial statements is outlined in note two of the statements. Terry ran uh, summarized that for you, and there were no changes uh, this year in any of those accounting policies. Uh, we didn't identify any alternative policies that would have been more appropriate and we didn't identify any policies that are controversial or in emerging areas. Uh, significant accounting estimates, basically the uh, estimating the operating grant receivable from the province of Manitoba. There is a formula to follow and uh, I uh, uh, looked at Terry's calculation of that and I, I agree with it. It's still subject, of course, to the province to, uh, to look it over and uh, approve that you owe them money back. Uh, book value of capital assets, the amortization that's claimed each year is an estimate, uh, but based on our audit uh, work, we are satisfied with those estimates that were made by management. There were... Um, no other significant financial statement disclosures except, of course, for the uh, disclosure in there about how COVID-19 has affected the financial operations. Uh, and Terry has uh, inserted a note in the financial statements to indicate that. Um, and there were no accumulated or um, uncorrected misstatements. Uh, so that's not an issue. There were no deficiencies at all in internal control. We have uh, 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 issued a, uh, or management has issued a representation letter, uh, and I have a signed copy of that to make sure that the financial statements uh, are in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. And uh, we didn't identify any other matters to bring to your attention at this time. Uh, once again, thanks to management and, and staff uh, for all the assistance that they provide us uh, with during the audit. And um, it's a pleasure uh, working on uh, the Handyman audit. Much appreciated. Does um, 
anybody have any questions regarding uh, my presentation? Okay, thank you, Mr. Hardy. Uh, any questions uh, in regards to his report? Okay. And that there's none, uh, I thank you very much for your thorough uh, report and also your words of uh, uh, kindness to our administration and to Mr. Ganita. I know that uh, we have some good people in our office that can work with you and, and we're happy to hear uh, feedback. Yeah, my, very much appreciated and well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, council move on. Uh, 6.1. Resolve the building permits 121 through 521 with a total estimated value of $183,500 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. 6.2. Result that the letter from the Swan Valley School Division be received. Moved by Councillor White. Second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion. Councillor White. I'm, this, I'm hoping that we'll be sending a letter of support of some kind. Uh, to, to the uh, school division saying we support the general principles, uh, their concern. They've asked for a, a letter from us. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor, opposed, it's carried. 7.2. One result of the director of public works report be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion. Councilor White. A couple questions, uh, Mr. Poole. A compliment to you. I'm assuming that OSS uh, reduced their bin rental by 50 percent. What catalyzed that? Um, basically, just working with them and, and asking them how we can how we can lower our costs over time and they were able to accommodate that request so they did. Okay, cool. Uh, in the, regarding LP and the truck sweeps as cover, I don't know what a truck sweep is. Uh, just the, the trucks that go into the LP yard, they have to clean them, you know, clean their trucks off, the drivers do, and LP collects those and some they sell, some they have to get rid of off the yard, and as long as they pass our inspection, we will accept those sweeps at the landfill to use as cover, which uh, we don't charge them for on the scale. So that, in fact, would just be bark off the black poplar, by and large? Yeah, all, all diff different kinds of bark off the trees on a, if the trucks are transported. I just want to thank you in moving forward with the, uh, the mitigation activities you're doing relative to getting water to SPL. A very important part of our community, and uh, it, it looks like it's moving really quickly and, and quite well. So, thank you for that. And I'm assuming I, I know you thanked your team that been working out in the field at minus 40 for the last week. Uh, that must have been tough on them, as you're concerned about their health, too, of course. And uh, thank you for that, Councillor Friesen. I just wanted to uh, for you to pass along to those two other things. I don't know. And Memphis, and he was just doing an excellent job. Very careful. Far side of the street, there was high school trees are in there. He purposely didn't swoosh all of the snow onto them. So, thanks to him. He was doing a super job. Thanks, Dan. Okay, thank you. Council Morio. Uh, Mr. Poole, the utility, um, he gave a report regarding that momentary cloudiness of the water. Did we ever get to what a root cause that? We're still trying to find out what it was. It's not there now, but uh, yeah, we're sending it away to, to other laboratories and engineering firms wanting to take a look at it because they're interested in all that's what the cause was. But so stay tuned. Investigation is still going. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3, council reports. I'll start with Councillor Friesen. Um, I don't think I have anything. Okay, thank you. 
Council Morio. Uh, the only thing I got to report is we attended the last Tuesday's uh, Committee of the Whole meeting and we just continued discussing ongoing uh, recreation issues with the COVID pandemic and the, how the orders uh, were affecting that and uh, some deliberations on our uh, upcoming uh, purchase service agreements, negotiations with uh, neighboring municipalities. So that's all I have. Uh, Mayor, what do we have? I have nothing to report today. Okay. Uh, Councillor Delorier. Nothing to report. Okay. Councillor White. Well, some of you guys forgot because you were there too. Uh, we, we met last week on the 3rd with uh, Sergeant Henson and we're looking at ways to improve uh, crime control and all of us were there. So you guys had wonderful input to that. And one of the concerns was the schedule. It appears there might be some time, in fact, when RSMP aren't uh, patrolling, but they may be at the same time. So we were asking to look into that. On the fourth, I met with PMH, and uh, I was pleased to say they, they have there's some concerns in our community, and they're communicating with me, trying to solve those concerns. So I, I'd like to see the, the doors are open there. Uh, I met also recently with the Swan Valley Medical Health Foundation. Uh, at that time, I think I was representing council, looking at ways to encourage more nurses to come to our, our community. I think roughly 40% of the nurses here right now are eligible for retirement. So I can tell you that the medical, the health foundation was very uh, receptive to the possibility of members of this council, some nurses and others going to UCN in Nepal for a meeting with uh, the young nurses over there. I think there's 18 of them there and 12 of them in fact are from the Valley. And also meeting with the UCN staff here in our community. I'm guessing there's another dozen uh, DPNs uh, training as we speak. So uh, I, I thank the foundation for their, their support. Uh, we talked about the cow and, and I, I think it's important to realize that yes, all of us attended the cow meetings but the community as a whole, the general public, doesn't uh, attend the council meetings. So I think it's an incumbent on me and our council to let the council, let the community know what happens at those council meetings also. So, in fact, we talked at length about economic development. And council Delorey uh, found some information where the town of Morden was doing some uh, significant ec uh, economic development uh, through international immigrations. And they downloaded that, I think, onto RISE. So RISE is going to follow up with that, and I appreciate that, sir. Uh, the pool repairs are looking fantastic. I think we're 98% cured with the... Uh, the swirl tub, which is good news, and maybe it's 100 by now. We talked about the arena a lot and what we do with the ice, but that decision has been made for us, so uh, with no more MJHL, we don't have to worry. In fact, we pulled a plug on the electrical uh, system there for the, for the ice, and that was $10,000 a month, help me if I'm wrong here, which we saved, which I appreciate the input from our administrative staff. And we looked at budgets, past, present, and future, and uh, trying to uh, keep a hold on them. And I want to thank Patty and Derek and Terry and uh, Chief Fedorczyk as some of the major players for looking after those monies and trying to do it. A uh, thing that came up was we're looking, trying to find ways to help the ones who had the most difficulty during COVID. Now, good luck with that concept, but it's something we think we should do. Uh, obviously, some people have, have more need than others. So I, I encourage our viewers to uh, contact the CAO or, and or any other staff or any of our counselors about any of these issues, and we'll probably send it back to our administrative staff. But those cow meetings are pretty important, and, and the public isn't there, so I think it's important for the public to hear what we're doing there. And moving on to some more meetings, uh, on the 12th, uh, Councillor Deputy Mayor Wintoni and myself, I think Patty, were you there too with Mr. Major, MP Major? I think your name was there. So we met with our, our MP, and uh, Councillor Wintoni came up with a wonderful thing. He said, Whatever happened to the Northern Allows? And I'm thinking that our nurse recruiting plans, like, they're not one of the reasons they don't come here is, is, is economic, obviously. So if we could find $2,000 a year more to through a Northern Allowance program to give to a nurse, uh, that could be significant. Regardless, any particular profession would like that. We looked at uh, the rail line, the CNR rail line, and what's going to happen with that. Mr. Major has a connection with, uh, what is the gentleman, it doesn't matter, the Vice President. We looked at uh, 
sell and broadband coverage. We looked at professional recruitment, business incentives, fuel tax was a hot issue, immigration and tourism. And I appreciate the MP wanting to meet with our community. And I think three from this council right today were at that meeting, so that, that's all wonderful. And then today I spent some time on the phone with, uh, uh, what is the temper with CAO Patty and the Citizen of the Year has come up again with COVID running around and my forgetfulness we didn't do anything about this fall nor winter but I want to sow a seed with our viewing public that we're talking about Citizen of the Year again if you want any more information on it feel free to touch base with me or our CAO and uh, we're trying to identify a citizen who's done exemplary work to the community and we'll take suggestions, of course. We'll follow up with some media releases and uh, maybe our, our website, trying to be, be more specific in what those are. But I think uh, that was a pretty busy week, so that, that's it for now. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Councilor Gray. I know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor White covered off a lot of it. So just for myself, uh, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, it was mentioned earlier, had it there other meetings last week and uh, we did talk in length about doctor recruitment and some of the changes in some of the return of service agreements that is uh, actually being ironed out right now and actually the team is actually looking I think about three positions to be recruiting to, to Swan River so that's in the works right now so they're doing a good job there yes we did talk about nurse recruitment which all the municipalities have agreed that they would uh, support nurse recruitment in some capacity so that's still good kind of being looked at it and ironed out as well and what those return services uh, as well look like. Um, we, um, we received a, a nice donation from uh, uh, the Tim Hortons crew there, Apendra and uh, his staff and, and also from everybody in the community that supported the Smile Cookie Tribe drive and uh, the team there they raised for this Health Facilities Foundation seven thousand four hundred nineteen and sixty five cents so another great uh, drive that they had this year they've been doing this now for the last like what, four years or something like that they've been supporting the health facilities foundation so it's a great um it's a great thing for our community and in the future where um, these dollars are invested in, in health care in, in our Swan River valley um aside from all that uh tonight is uh Ms. Hinkleman's last meeting, uh, regular meeting of council with us, and uh, before she departs us in another week and a, and a half. And I do want to again say to her, thank you for your service to uh, to their town, and uh, on behalf of council and your other co-workers and administration and uh, staff and and all the residents of the town of Swan River, we thank you for your dedicated uh, service for the last uh, number of years. Thank you. So moving on, uh, I guess we have, uh, oh, sorry. Result of the acting CAO report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Any questions? Any comments from you, Ms. Hickel? Lots of challenges that we've been through and lots of things I've learned and lots of opportunities. So grateful for all of that. And, uh, yeah, I'm still around. So uh, I'm sure I'll take a few calls and text messages, but that's okay. Okay, well, good. We appreciate that and, and we sincerely wish you all the best. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? New business. Uh, update on the arena ice. So I'm just going to read this uh, first. It's resolved that the Centennial Arena continue to keep the ice plant shut off and run natural ice in the facility. Be it for the resolve, the ice be available for rental as long as the weather permits. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion. Councillor Delorier. Um, I have no problem with leaving the ice in, but in our discussions with uh, uh, Mr. Fedorchuk, 
Did he, did he not say that it would be easier to, to do their, their skimming procedure before it pops? Uh, I wonder if we should change resolution to, to be from weather permits to administration's discretion. I mean, that, that would probably be, you know, I, I, I'd rather see uh, them be able to take that out in controlled fashion than have a big, big sopping mess there. I assume that's what it meant. It doesn't mean to leave it in until the last possible moment. It means take it out when you can. But I, I could see that being being seen in a different light. So I guess. Uh, <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay. Uh, Councilor Gray. All we need are three bookings that um, equal to the cost of staffing and the ten thousand dollars for hydro. And we'll, I expect the management will leave it open until they'll leave it open the whole summer. As long as it covers the staffing costs and the hydro costs. So anybody who wants to book it. That's that's the plan. at least that's what I would think is the committee chair that, that would be the plan. That was the reason we didn't have it because there aren't people who are prepared to pay to use it. Um, you're right. Um, yes, Mr. Fairchild has had a number of conversations with people, and he said, you know, it's around 125 hours or so that we need a month to guarantee to face the high probabilities, and anybody who's been unable. Been a few hours here and there. We had two rentals over the weekend, two, one hour, one and a half hour rentals over the weekend. So it's just the, the volume of it's going to be really difficult to get that enough in there to make it work for a while. Uh, are we amending this uh, resolution? It's up to you. I, I, I'm fine with it. I'm the secondary. I assume. As, as, long, as long as administration understands that. We don't want a big mess in there to use their use your better judgment and take that out, you know, while you, while you're still able to before it, before it pops as was described to us. So I assume that that was what. I don't like to make assumptions. <laughs> uh, yeah, like you, you, I'll remember that. <laughs> no, thank then, you, then, sir. I'll, then I'll ask the question. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eight point two, resolved that the organizational chart be approved. As per our council meeting discussions, moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor Gray. There was one adjustment uh, at the top. If you recall, the assistant two. Uh, you have every uh, opportunity to table this as well. I, I'm not Councilor, I, I, I think that it's fine. We should get on with it. Um, okay. And there's more to be done with it, but let's move in the right direction. Okay. And just make a note that that particular position, you know, vacancies require approval to be filled. You know, that position as it's described isn't going to be filled. It's going to be filled as an assistant to the CMA. So we'll make, no, we'll make note of that then. Uh, Councillor Delorier. One other thing, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but in, on the very left hand column, where does the total for the for the head count in the little orange box on the the box above the red line uh, it says six, but I count more than six. Yeah, I, I count 10. Well, this is not adding up correctly, so we can change that. Okay. 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 Point taken. Um, Councilor Gray? Didn't we? I, I think the reason I could be wrong. 
the positions were noted as 0.8s because of hours or something. And and then I suspect the accumulator didn't adjust from the 0.8s when we when we said no, that's your full time position, put them as ones. Mm -hmm. I suspect that's why. I don't really care about the yellow box that we can eliminate it. Um, we're moving we're moving ahead with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, Dallas and Deloria. Can we, with, with the changes that were talked about here tonight, can we get an updated copy email to us? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.3. Result of the rental rate for the outdoor arena be $28.57 an hour plus GST, which includes one flood per rental be it further resolved that users of the facility provide their own pucks for use moved by councillor delorier second by deputy mayor Tony. discussion councillor delorier so, so just for clarification this is for rentals if you're an organized group wanting to rent it if you just want to go there with your kid you can still go there, go there and skate right There's periods set aside in the schedule for actual rentals okay it's for that for those periods the rest okay. of the time it's not for rental okay you can go out there and use it okay is that clear yeah okay and, and councillor gray oh, i'm sorry just i was for edification i think the rate is just what our actual labor costs are expected to be okay good point uh councillor freeze no, I was in favor. I'm okay. sorry if I was I didn't, I didn't ask you. Okay. Okay, good. Then I know that. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point one. Resolved that accounts as, as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts check number twenty seven two oh four to Number 27256 is listed on Schedule A, totaling $85,273.06. Payroll accounts checks number 4810 to number 4815 as listed on Schedule B, totaling $76,358.40. Direct deposits in amounts of $29,540 as per Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling like thirteen thousand two hundred seventeen and seventy eight cents as per Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Questions. Everything is explained. No further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2. Resolved that the Swan River Handy Transit Ban draft financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020 be approved and the independent auditor's report thereon be accepted as presented. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wynn Tony, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.3. Resolved that the financial statements for the one month ending January 31st, 2021 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11 1 resolve the bylaws number 20 2020 being a bylaw of the town of swan river to regulate the proceedings and conduct of council and the committees thereof be read a third time and passed moved by councillor gray second by councillor white discussion recorded vote all in favor opposed it's carried unanimous I didn't have anything for myself here tonight, but do we have anything Lawson. camera? Lawson? We got the letter okay. from lawyer. Okay, thank you. Resolve, resolve that pursuits to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have lawsuit, legal, 
Motion moved by <coughs> Councilor Gray, second by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Mary Cameron. Okay. Uh, no business rising out of uh, camera, so resolving to the the meeting of Council now be adjourned at 8.58pm. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Gray. All in favor? <laughs>